Welcome, dear viewers. Welcome to our show, Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well during this COVID-19 pandemic situation by wearing masks and keeping distance with each other. We wish you a happy new year 2021 again. Dear viewers, today our topic is ankle arthroplasty. That means ankle joint replacement, a very important and time demanding topic. It is very necessary for many patients. And our honorable speaker uh, is Dr. Muhammad Khairul Islam, MD, DPM, a resident physician and pediatric surgery, one Brooklyn Health, Brooklyn, New York. I would like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Khairul Islam to our show, Orthopedic Solution Academy. Dr. Khairul Islam. Thank you, Dr. Tanvi, for uh, introducing me in your program and also giving me the opportunity and privilege to be a speaker today. And thank you to the viewers and happy new year to everyone. Welcome, welcome. Uh, it's a, a great honor for us as because of uh, Dr. Khairul Islam is a man of Bangladesh and uh, was a student of uh, Rangpur Medical College. And definitely I am proud also as because of he's a very good friend of mine uh, so, my dear viewers, uh, though we are not doing ankle arthroplasty in our country, but uh, in the United States, uh, they are doing these things for many years. So, we want to uh, share and we want to gather knowledge from them. And uh, Dr. Khairul Islam is one of them. Uh, he is a very young and enthusiastic podiatric surgeon. Uh, they are doing ankle arthroplasty there. So, uh, we arranged these programs and I would like to thank Dr. Khairul Islam for giving his valuable time to our show, Orthopedic Solution Academy. Uh, dear viewers, we don't want to spend any more time and we want to start our program. And our topic is ankle arthroplasty. And now I would like to request our honorable speaker, uh, Dr. Khairul Islam, uh, to start his uh, presentation. Dr. Khairul Islam, please. Thank you, Dr. Tanvir, for a nice introduction of me. Uh, it's, it's a great honor to be here today with you. And it's, there are so many memories <laughs> with you, especially when we are a student in Rangpur Medical College. And I'm very nostalgic right now. Anyway, thank you, viewers, uh, whoever connected with us. Hope everyone doing well and is staying safe uh, during this difficult time of COVID-19 pandemics. Hope everybody taking precaution and wearing masks and staying safe at, at the society. All right, without any further delay, I'm going to start to this very important to uh, topic. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Tanvi, can you see? Uh, no, we cannot uh, see your screen. Yeah, we can see the screen, but uh, it need to be full screen. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a downloading, I hope. Okay. It's a little slow. And how about now? Yeah, it's okay. It's full screen now, and uh, we can see the first slide, the ankle arthroplasty slide. All right, so for this presentation, there is no disclosure for any funding or anything. And uh, due to HIPAA Act, I'm not allowed to uh, share any of our patient information and picture. So what is ankle arthroplasty? So ankle arthroplasty was first attempted in 1970s. There are different types of ankle implant is fixed bearing, mobile bearing, cemented and cementless. And there is different surgical approach, anterior approach and lateral approach. So before going to further, we have, we're gonna take a look about ankle anatomy. It, we also known as a talocoral joint, which is made of three ba big bone, tibia, fibula, and talus. It's a hinge type of synovial joint. It's very congruent and very stable joint and very complex architecture and complex ligamentous system. So, <clears throat> ankle, 
Entel biomechanics, that is very important. So here I'm going to present a video that I learned when I was in school. Oh, you guys can see that. And we're gonna learn about uh, ankle biomechanics, how our uh, ankle joint works during locomotion. In the anatomical lower extremity, there exist three cardinal planes, sagittal, frontal, and transverse. Anatomical motion that occur parallel to these planes are considered to be the dominant motions of that plane. The horizontal or transverse plane divides the foot in a superior and inferior half. Adduction and abduction are the motions that occur. Parallel to this plane, adduction is when the foot and leg are medially rotated toward the midline of the body. Abduction is when the foot and leg are laterally rotated away from the midline. The frontal or coronal plane divides the foot into anterior and posterior portions. Inversion and eversion are the motions that occur parallel in this plane. Inversion is when the plantar surface of the foot rotates toward the midline of the body. And eversion is when the plantar surface of the foot rotates away from the midline of the body. The sagittal plane, which in the foot is approximated to the osteological axis of the second metatarsal, separates the foot into medial and lateral halves. Parallel to this plane, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion refer to the relationship between the surface of the foot and the anterior surface of the leg. Thus, dorsiflexion is when the dorsum of the foot moves toward the leg, whereas plantar flexion is defined when the dorsal surface of the foot moves away from the leg. It should be noted that the process of walking happens in the sagittal plane. Triplanar motion does not occur in parallel to any of the three cardinal body planes mentioned. It is merely one motion consisting of components from all three body planes. This can be demonstrated in the lower extremity by actions of pronation and supination, which are triplanar motions. Pronation is a motion of the foot which is comprised of eversion, dorsiflexion, and abduction. With this, the foot is seen to move toward the anterior leg, while the toes and plantar surface move away from the midline, whereas supination consists of inversion, plantar flexion, and adduction, resulting in the foot to move away from the anterior leg, with the toes and plantar surface moving toward the midline. At a particular joint, in order for a given triplanar motion to be in supination or pronation, it must consist of motions discussed above. The amount of each movement depends on the anatomy of the joint. With that said, it is critical to understand that pronation and supination are triplanar motions, but not all triplanar motions are considered pronation or supination. So from this presentation, we learn about uh, ankle biomechanics and uh, plane, which plane it works and the axis of ankle joint. So when we're going to do ankle uh, replacement, especially when the osteoarthritis is pretty advanced uh, and different kind of cause of osteoarthritis like primary cause, secondary cause and post-traumatic and also rheumatoid arthritis, failed ankle arthritis or fusion or as a revision for the failed ankle arthroplasty. So these are the indications, but we're not going to do replace right away. Before doing so, we're gonna try conservative management, like pain management, bracing, orthotics, physical therapy. When all this fade, you see the X-ray here, and on the left side, we see the ankle joint is pretty uh, clear. There is a cartilage, joint space. But on the right hand side, picture B, you see totally arthritic changes of the joint. There is no joint space at all and destruction of cartilage and think how painful it could be. Okay, when we're not gonna do ankle replacement, when you have known allergies to any of those implant materials, infection, complete tailor necrosis, if there is insufficient bone stock, like you are not able to put the implant in, uh, severe osteoporosis, ankle arthritis with malleolar exoresis, non-functional or limb muscles, complete loss of ankle collateral ligament, Charcot arthropathy. So these are the contraindication. We are not able to replace. What are the risks 
each and every surgery has risk and benefit. Always there is risk. There is perioperative risk. Like during surgery, you, there could be a lot of bleeding. There could be an injury to the nerve and blood vessels. It could be fracture when you're making the cut. Postoperative, like infection, deep vein thrombosis, delayed or failure bone healing, problem with wound healing, complex regional pain syndrome, failed or broken implant. Every possibility. Patient selection is the key for success of ankle arthroplasty uh, outcome. So in, when you select patient, focus on these factors, lower body mass index, adequate bone stock for implantation, uh, limited or cor correctable angular deformity. If there is like too much deformity, you're not able to fix it. Uh, stable hind foot, middle-aged or elderly patient, non-smoker. If someone is smoke, definitely has to stop smoking, all sorts of smoking, because it delayed bone healing. So before proceeding to total ankle replacement, you have to make plan. And doing this plan is like multiple uh, steps uh, approach. You have to do ankle biomechanics. Following importance also has to be considered like limb, ankle ligament, uh, alignment, anatomy of bone and ligament, how are they intact or not. Uh, triplanar ankle motion, triplanar subtalar joint motion, physical exam findings uh, along with x-ray findings. And all x-ray has to be done in weight bearing uh, uh, to get a better uh, alignment of the ankle joint and lower limb. Also CT scan helpful for mapping and potentially revealing any kind of subchondral cystic lesion. MRI also beneficial for the assessment of teller or tibial cystic changes, the evaluation of soft tissue structure, assessment of potential ABN or changes of the tells. Also consider EMG and nerve conduction velocity testing in patient with reported like subjective neuropathy or any underlying history of diabetes, peripheral vascular disease. Oh. Okay, so next slide is saying, what are, what are we trying to do? What is our achievement or what is our goal doing ankle arthroplasty? It is alignment. Main achieving as a, as a foot and ankle surgeon, our main achievement is the alignment of the ankle joint with the leg. Pain relief, also mobility and improved quality of life. This is the main reason we're doing ankle replacement. So what is ankle alignment means? Like ankle relationship, relationship with the lower leg with the foot. You see here on the left, um, photo is showing the lower third of the leg relating to the foot. It should be like pretty much parallel or in the same line. But when you have advanced osteoarthritis, you can see in the x-ray uh, uh, at the right, you see right x-ray film is showing how much arthritic change and we see that look is the ankle is in valgus. Now, very important concept about uh, find the apex of the deformity because whatever alignment or whatever deformity you're trying to correct, you have to know this concept. It's called center of rotational angle. That is true apex. Here the B, you see the cora, center of rotational angle, when it bisect uh, the lower third of the leg and, lower, and, and the ankle, you see where is the two bisection, its meeting point is the central of rotational angle. That has to be measured before uh, um, um, doing replacement. And also you have to measure a lateral distal tibial angle and anterior distal tibial angle. That's how we measure those. Those we measure like long axis of the leg or long axis of the tibia. And there is a um, uh, 
surface, uh, articular surface of the lower end of the tibia, that's called plafond, draw a straight line. And this angle is perpendicular to this line. It's about 89 plus minus three, that's the normal lateral distal tibial angle. And anterior distal tibial angle is the same where we draw the long axis of the tibia and anterior and posterior articular surface of the tibia. Tanvi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can uh, hear you loudly okay. and clearly. Please proceed on. Okay. So there are several uh, implants approved by FDA. Uh, the most commonly used device in, uh, in US is a STAR. That's my area of interest, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the STAR. Also, there is InBone, Jimmer, Prophecy, Infinity, Kittens, Ventus, Integra, Biomed, but uh, there is almost like 30 implants all over the world, but FDA doesn't have approval, all of them. So today's main topic about STAR, that's called Scandinavian Total Ankle Replacement that actually developed in Europe. First tried by, uh, developed by Co-Fed in 1978. This is the only mobile bearing cementless implant approved by FDA in 2009. It has three components, uh, including polyethylene mobile spacer. And that mobile component allows for rotational translation and reduce the stress at the implant and bone interface junction. About 30,000 placement worldwide, most researched ankle implant in the world and star yielding superior result comparing other implant available in the market. Less bone removal does not require fusion of the leg bones and has less operating time, quicker return to activity, often with partial wet bearing at four weeks. So what are the components of a star angle uh, plan? It has three components. You see, basically, it has tibial plate and the teller component. And in between, there is a mobile bearing that is made of medical graded polyethylene. It's just a piece of plastic but it is medically graded. And you see here a schematic, how that looks in coronal view and sagittal view. From the front, you see uh, the tiller part, it has like, there's a bar that goes inside the uh, uh, tibia and there's a tiller part. And in between the yellow color, there's the plastic part, the bearing part. What are the surgical approach uh, for a star is anterior approach. We uh, approach through the anterior incision. It's a, there is a few, a few nine steps, of, nine steps of this whole process. And it, if I go to explain this, it will take me like at least like 30 minutes, but I'm just going to the steps name and there's going to be a video presentation at the end by Stryker. That will be clear every concept. So there's, what are the steps? Step one, we have to set up everything. Uh, then uh, step two, um, actual plane alignment. Then step three, coronal or sagittal plane alignment, tibial cut. Step five is stellar preparation and resection. Teller component sizing. Seventh step is datum positioning. And uh, step eight is teller circumferential cuts. And step nine is implant sizing and placement. That video will show us everything is uh, very self explanatory. So during our cut, our priority given to protect adjacent anatomical structure and minimizing bone resection. Six main cuts made in order to prepare the tibia and talus for the implant. And uh, simple transverse tibial and teller cut are made here. And the uh, teller component just sits on the talus, form a cap on the top and around all four sides. 
Then make a hole, a drill in the tibia. That can serve as an anchor point for the tibial component. You will see here, there is a bar, bar on the right. It's a weight-bearing x-ray. Finally, metal component are implanted and an appropriate polyethylene component is selected, depending on the laxity of the ankle joint. So it depends how thick are gonna be spacer. Every patient is different. So post-operative recovery, uh, that's the most important thing after doing any surgery. Patient compliance is very important for the outcome of ankle blastoplasty. Patient has to be non-weight bearing at least six weeks following the surgery on a plaster cast, different form of cast we can use, posterior spleen, even patient can use cam walker. Rehab usually starts in two weeks after surgery and total rehab time depends on its patient. Usually our standard is 14 to 16 weeks. It has four phase planned by physical therapist. Return to work, usually our standard is four months. Also it depends on the patient. Uh, anticipated return to all kinds of activities like golfing at three to four months, hiking four to five months. Uh, and this is normal. You will see ankle swelling and mild redness around the ankle. It could be persist six to 12 months. So you have to counsel your patient that there could be like uh, swelling and redness even after surgery, uh, almost about a year. And also you have to counsel your patient avoid any kind of running and contact or uh, high impact sports. So there is the animated presentation. Uh, I'm gonna share this link with you guys so you can see. And it will be very helpful. It is very self-explanatory. And it, I hope this will help you to uh, understand how do you place the ankle arthroplast I mean implant. Please bear with me, maybe it's uh, slow loading. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you and that's a great presentation. And we can see the video also. Thank you, Dr. Tanvi. Hopefully this will help. Uh, facilitate. This video will illustrate the primary landmarks, orientations, and positions used in order to implant the star ankle. The first principal landmark identifies the proper orientation of the implant in the transverse plane. The T alignment guide can be lined up with an osteotome placed in the medial gutter. This is important in order to protect the malleoli from inadvertently being compromised later in the technique. Adjust the varus valgus alignment in the coronal plane by moving the guide medially or laterally on the tibial tubercle pin. With fluoroscopy oriented directly down the barrel of the angel wing, showing the angel wing as thin line with pegs, line up the tip of the angel wing peg to be at the most superior portion of the tibial plafond. Approximately five millimeter of bone will be removed from the tibia. The angel wing represents the location of the transverse tibial cut. Make medial and lateral adjustments with the gear key to minimize the risk of notching the medial and lateral malleoli during tibial resection.
Make an upward proximally oriented cut along the inner edge of the medial malleolus. Make the transverse distal tibial cut. Approximately four millimeters of bone will be removed from the Taylor dome. The foot should be 88 to 90 degrees perpendicular to the long axis of the tibia. Excessive dorsiflexion will shift the Taylor component anteriorly, while excessive plantar flexion will shift it posteriorly. Proper orientation protects the Taylor neck from inadvertent weakening from the later Taylor chamfer cut. The talus must be touching the paddle face to ensure adequate resection. Make the transverse tailor cut. Insert the 12 millimeter end of the joint space evaluator between the cut surfaces of the tibia and talus. 12 millimeters of space is required for positioning of the tibial and tailor components with a six millimeter bearing. Insert the post tailor cut template onto the cut surface of the talus. The template determines the correct tailor component size. The outer outline of the template corresponds to the outer outline of the tailor component. Once the appropriate tailor template is determined, attach the drill guide onto the template. The post of the drill guide should be centered over the lateral process. This positions the implant at the center of rotation of the ankle. Once template alignment is secured, insert a 2.4 millimeter drill tip pin through the drill guide. With the Taylor anterior posterior cut guide attached to the datum, prepare the anterior surface of the talus through the distal and proximal slots of the Taylor cut guide with a pecking and sweeping motion. With an oscillating saw, make the posterior Taylor cut through the posterior guide of the Taylor cutting guide. With the medial lateral Taylor cut guide attached to the datum, the reciprocating blade is inserted into the guide until the laser mark and last cutting tooth are flush with the front edge of the guide. The saw is then started and rotated by dropping the tip of the saw blade until the top edge of the blade is even with the engraved line on the side of the guide. This ensures the proper depth of resection while avoiding resecting down into the subtalar joint. The blade is then drawn anteriorly until the teeth meet the bottom edge of the anterior chamfer face. Excess bone is removed with rongeurs, osteotomes, and other surgical instruments, and removal is confirmed by placement of the window trial. Insert the straight keel mill into the center slot of the Taylor window trial and drill an interior hole, a posterior hole, and center hole. Connect the holes by sweeping the drill in the slot. The star ankle, a mobile ankle designed to improve your patient's mobility. United States federal law restricts this device to sail by or on order of a physician. The star is indicated for use as a non-cemented implant. All right. You see how easy is that, Dr. Tanvir? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, that's that, a great that, video. That, that's the innovation of medical science because the advancement of technology makes it easier for surgeons to do that. All right, these are the references uh, for my presentation. Yeah. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you, viewers. Do you have any question or any concern? Please let me know. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Khairul Islam, for your nice and brilliant presentation. And uh, that was a magnificent presentation. And uh, 
I hope uh, many of our young surgeons and uh, innovative surgeons will be benefited uh, by your presentation. Uh, Dr. Karula, I, I, I have uh, uh, some questions regarding your presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I want to uh, know about the uh, rehab uh, protocol. Is there any rehab protocol or uh, for the ankle arthroplasty patient? Uh, how long uh, they have to be non weight bearing uh, after the ankle arthroplasty? And uh, how long uh, it takes a patient uh, to come back uh, to his or her normal life? after ankle arthroplasty. Okay, I'll go step by step. First, after surgery, it has to be six weeks non-weight bearing, at least six weeks. And patient will uh, be, uh, come to see us every week for follow-up. And after patient should start rehab immediately after the end of two weeks as early as possible, like at least uh, after two weeks, they, sh they must start rehab. And rehab, we have very nice coordination with the rehab uh, therapist, I mean, physical therapist. They plan, uh, every patient is different. So the plan for each patient is different, but the standard rehab started two weeks after surgery. So they started using like ankle range of motion, uh, First, uh, how, you know, depend how far they can move based on their pain level. So that's what I'm saying. Every patient has different perception, perception of pain. As uh, it also has racial variation, like pain perception. Asian has less pain perception than Hispanic and African American. So some patient can start rehab early based on how determined they want to go back to work. So, uh, but the total length of rehab is 14 to 16 weeks. And uh, there is different uh, visiting uh, uh, protocol. Like first, up to 10 weeks, they're gonna, they're gonna see rehab, I mean, physical therapist every three or two times a week. And uh, then um, from 10 to 14 weeks, they're gonna see every two weeks and then, uh, once every two weeks and then, sorry, once a week and then 14 to 16 weeks, they're gonna see every two weeks until they totally done with their rehab process. And usually they can go back to work at the end of four months. But again, it depends on patient. Every patient is different. Some patient could go back early, depending on their bone healing, how faster they can heal. And especially if there is a patient is a smoker, smoking delay bone healing. So we strongly encourage to stop smoking uh, before even planning to do total ankle replacement. And this is a good thing like ankle fusion was still a standard of care for endosteus or advanced osteoarthritis is ankle fusion. But an ankle fusion is you don't have motion on your joint. But if you do replacement, you have still motion. You can walk, you can hike, you can do uh, uh, even bike, swimming, do your uh, daily activities without any uh, problem. Like a lot of patients, they're doing their all activities uh, very well after having this done. And they're very happy. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, 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 what about the longevity of the implants? Uh, uh, because of it is very important uh, for our country. Uh, 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 what about the time of uh, uh, the life of these uh, implants? That's also depend on each and every individual, but usually it usually lasts as five to ten years. So if there is no complication or no adverse event happen, it's usually uh, like only concern about the mobile bearing part, the middle part, the spacer, that's plastic. So over time is there is a wear and tear. Even our body cartilage destroy over time, right? Wear and tear. So that's the plastic. So it, it usually like after 10 years, you might need a replace the spacer or re-replace, but 
patients have seven, 60 years, uh, depending on their life uh, uh, expectancy, like how long their uh, you know lifespan. So if you if patient is 60 year and you replace ankle uh, total ankle at age 60, if after 70, if it still needs it, you might do a revision. But it could be it could be it could be stay like until like 30 years. So okay, but it usually 10. That's great. That's great. Uh, that's a great information for us. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Khairul Islam, for your brilliant and innovative presentation regarding ankle arthroplasty. I uh, hope uh, we will start it in our country soon uh, with your help, and uh, our patient will be benefited by uh, doing ankle arthroplasty in our country. And I uh, hope uh, we will uh, see you in the uh, next program. Uh, with another topic regarding the ankle arthroplasty or it may be the revision ankle arthroplasty uh, and it will be a great pleasure uh, for us to be with you and to learn from you and to hear from you and uh, share knowledge uh, from you and please uh, say something uh, for our viewers and for orthopedic solution academy a few speech uh, for our viewers dr khairul islam Thank you, Dr. Tanvir, uh, for having me here today. I'm really grateful, and definitely, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll my best intention to learn this as much as I can and uh, share this knowledge to my fellow uh, countrymen, fellow physician in my school, in my community, and also help to you know patient for their relief of pain and. It, to improve their quality of life, definitely I will I will do my best in uh, in, in the pros perspective of my uh, and um, definitely it's going to be a great honor for me if I be able to help people, my especially my country, man. Thank you, Tanvir, for uh, uh, having me here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Karul Islam. Uh, dear viewers, and that's the end of our program today. And I would like to thank Renato Pharmaceuticals Limited for sponsoring our program and definitely our media partner, Raj TV. Uh, without the help of Raj TV, we cannot uh, do anything. So many, many thanks to Raj TV and Dr. Vashudev Shah for helping us to uh, continue our academic sharing. And I hope you all are. Uh, aware of wearing mask and keeping distance with each other and uh, hope we'll see in the next friday uh, till then i'm dr mamutan pirashraf consultant uh, nato uh, saying bye bye to you bye bye you are watching raj tv jagorone 